as I hope you're all doing really well and looking forward to a beautiful spring. And in this video, I wanted to discuss one factor that scientists say is possibly the best predictor of how healthy you're going to be and how long you're going to live. They literally are calling it the predictor of your living capacity. And what it is, is your lung capacity. How do they measure it? There was the study, it's called the Framingham study. For three decades, it followed 5,200 individuals and it measured their exhalation volumes over a certain set period of time, which say how much they can exhale in this many seconds. And what they noticed is starting at the age of 30, for everybody, their lung capacity would decrease by 9 to 27% per decade. And here's a quote from them. This pulmonary function measurement appears to be an indicator of general health and vigor and literally a measure of living capacity, Cannell and Hubbard. Now, if you combine this knowledge with the understanding that diseases like cancer thrive in an anaerobic environment and hate oxygen, they cannot exist in a highly oxygenated environment. If you combine this with the knowledge that your lymphatic system gets drained and gets rejuvenated by your breathing, by your movement and your breathing, then you start to understand how crucial your lung capacity is. It's even more important than what you eat. It's even more important than what you drink because it's how you breathe and you do it many times every single minute non-stop all day all night so fortunately for us there's absolutely things that we can do not only to maintain but to improve our lung capacity we used to believe that's impossible but now we know it is so I wanted to go over 10 things that we can start doing today to make sure that we live longer and that we live healthier Number one, so for a few minutes every day, just relax, make sure your posture is straight, put your arms to the side and breathe in deeply and make sure that you feel they are going into your stomach, into your arms, into your legs and coming out of your limbs as you exhale as much air as you possibly can out of your lungs. Keep doing it just for a few minutes every day, even, you know, for three, four minutes every single day. Breathe in deeply. Make sure to let your body know that the extremities, that your stomach, that your lung capacity are all important to you and that you want to maintain them. Number two in terms of things that you can do to improve your lung capacity is something very few people do. Observe your dominant breathing pattern. Now, I don't just mean look at how deeply you breathe. We just did that. We just did an exercise for that. I mean, do you breathe through the nose or do you breathe through the mouth? Which nostril do you favor? Almost everybody favors a nostril and breathes more heavily for one nostril than the other. Try not to do that. Try to balance your breathing and to breathe evenly for both nostrils. When the air goes into your body, do you feel the tip of your nose, the center, the base? Do you feel the sides of your nose? Do you feel the center of your nose? When you breathe out, where do you feel the air coming out? Do you feel it between your upper lip and your nose? Do you feel it towards the tip? Try to breathe in a balanced manner. Feel your sides, feel your center, feel your base, feel the tip of your nose. Just feel the space between the nostrils and breathe for both sides. Breathe in deeply, breathe into your stomach. And one of the things that you will notice is it's really hard to breathe that way and to not have a good posture and to not breathe in deeply. That's just something that happens naturally when you balance your breathing pattern. All right, number three, make sure that you can breathe comfortably at night. This is very basic and we all understand it because we spend such a large portion of our lives sleeping, but yet how often do we not care if the air where we live is too dry, if we live in a city and it's too polluted, if it's not humid enough, if we don't have enough house plants, Yes, they're a drag, but they're all little things that we can do to make sure that we wake up more rested, that we have more energy to exercise, to breathe, and to be healthy during our day. Number four, do not overeat. 
we all do it. This is not a judgment call. I'm all too aware that we can use food to make ourselves happy, to give ourselves the energy that we need. But when we eat too much of it, we leave less room in our body for everything else. We compress our diaphragm. Our diaphragm compresses our lungs. Our lungs have less room for oxygen intake. And this is not good for our longevity. And this is not good as a general predictor of our health. Um, number five, include plenty of alkaline foods in your diet. Alkaline foods will oxygenate your body. Acidic foods will deprive your body of the oxygen that it needs. What are alkaline foods? Look them up online, almost everybody knows. Largely alkaline foods are fresh fruits, vegetables, grains, things that are not overcooked, things that are organic and well taken care of. There's also alkaline water, so you can drink that and improve the alkalinity of your body. Now, number six, when you're not alone, when it is safe, Make sure that you don't get lightheaded. I don't want you to pass out. I don't want you to take on too much. Know your body. Make sure that you're in a safe environment. And try to do this exercise to improve your lung capacity. Make sure that all the air leaves your body. And now breathe in to a count of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold your breath. One, two. Breathe in, one, two, hold your breath, one, two, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, hold your breath, one, two, exhale, one, two, hold your breath, one, two, exhale the rest of the way. Now do this exercise several times. If you need to shorten the periods of time between your exhalations or your inhalations, please do. Um, adapt this exercise to your current lung capacity, not your ideal lung capacity. And as your lung capacity improves, naturally you can lengthen the intervals of time between each step. Very good. Uh, number seven is swimming. Now, swimming is one of the absolute best things that you can do because as a form of exercise, it is so low impact on your body. It doesn't hurt your joints as much as running would. It doesn't strain your muscles, well, depending on how you swim, as much as many other exercises would. And at the same time, due to compression, your lungs will have to work harder to get the air they need when you're in the water. So your oxygen utilization, your resistance training, and your lung capacity will all be Improved. Number eight, working out at a higher altitude. Now be careful with that one. If you usually don't even work out, don't go up into the really high mountains and start a really high intensity working out program. Make sure that you take baby steps to build up your tolerance and to build up your resistance. Obviously, the higher up you go, the more thin the air will be, the harder your lungs will need to work to get the oxygen they will need, and the greater your lung capacity will become as a result of this workout. Number nine, do short bursts of high intensity exercises like resistance training. A study published in 2001 by the American Medical Association explored the maximum amount of oxygen the body can take in during exercise, and they concluded that endurance sports like long-distance running make you work harder to get the oxygen into your lungs, hence providing the lungs with a better workout. Now, you're probably starting to sense a theme here, that the harder your lungs need to work to get that oxygen, the deeper you breathe, the greater your lung capacity and your living capacity will be. Number 10, pay attention to your posture. A lot of people spend their day sitting. Naturally, they diminish the amount of room in their body by crouching and by sitting that they have for the oxygen. Now, don't think that just today, I'm going to dramatically improve my posture and it will all be so much better because the thing is, when you crouch and you sit all day, you build up your muscles around that. So your muscles are already built in such a way as to support your crouching and to make it more comfortable. So if you want to change that, you want to improve your posture and allow for greater room for your lungs and your body, you need to start slowly. You need to realize that it will take you a few weeks to build a new set of muscles to allow for that. And finally, remember, before you can breathe in as deeply as you like, you need to 
breathe out as deeply as you need to. Breathe all that tension, breathe all that stress, breathe all that baggage and negativity out of every part of your body. Let it leave because once it leaves, you allow room for the new things, for the better things, for the good things to come in. Cheers, guys. I hope you have a beautiful spring and I'll be talking to you.